Buyers and sellers today really want to have a clear understanding of is now a good time to really start looking for that next home as a buyer and for a seller really should I be considering putting my home on market maybe even before February or March which is our typical upswing for the spring market. Now the moderately rising home prices in late 2019 truly suggest that the economy is approaching a point where Prices are both beneficial for buyers and sellers. However, the low inventories that we're seeing right now suggest that prices are gonna to continue to rise at least for the foreseeable future. So with that, my name is George Moorhead with Bensley Properties. I've been practicing for a little over 27 years now and we've got some great metrics for you today. Uh, we got a big shout out to Trend Graphics. Uh, they help us with these metrics on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and of course, uh, annual basis. So we're gonna go over some of the year-end results and again, just cover really quick, where are we gonna go? What should we be seeing? Is it seller's market? Is it buyer's market? What is it that we should anticipate for, yes, 2020? So welcome everybody to 2020. It seems like a futuristic kind of number to say because you know, we used to read it in books and whatnot. But it's here, and uh, well, you know, uh, Armageddon hasn't happened, so let's uh, take a look at our market, and uh, first, let's go over the Northwest MLS, all right? So we're gonna take a look at the numbers on a whole. Now we're gonna look at two different numbers when we, when we talk about sales prices. One is the average price, and one is the median price. The average price on a bigger, more, I would say a larger scale, in my humble opinion, uh, shows a little bit more accuracy over time because it takes into consideration the, 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 the first time buyer's uh, market versus the median and uh, then again versus the, the luxury market. And over time, it gives us a better average. Now, the media tends to lend, lean more towards a median because it's a, it's a bigger number and it, it, it's a little bit different but really the tighter the community, the better the medium price becomes. On a grander scale, it's a, to me, in my humble opinion, it's a little bit skewed. So let's take a look at this. First of all, again, we're gonna go over year by year results, and then we will talk about trend and what to expect for this year. So as far as homes for sale, the Northwest MLS is down 31.6%, meaning that we have basically almost 37% less homes on the market. So if we have this bucket and all of the real estate agents, all the real estate companies put these listings into this bucket, we put a lid on it, right? Right now we have basically one third left. I said 37 or 30, you know, it's actually 31, 32%. Uh, so we have one third less inventory year over year. That's December to December, okay? December, 2018. December 2019, all right? Now, with that, the however is, we went up as far as number of sales, we went up almost 14%, which is awesome, okay? Again, a lot of that started to occur in May. And what happened in May? Interest rates came down, sales actually started going up. So the amount or the, the number of months of inventory actually started to drop. And in fact, we started uh, or we had a peak of about 2.3 months of inventory, and now we've dropped down to 0.9 months of inventory. Right here. That's not even a full month. Now a healthy market is said to be four to six months of inventory. That is a balanced market as far as inventory that is available for buyers and sellers that are, that are making their moves, all right? However, we haven't seen four to six months of inventory uh, for going on almost four years now. So is this the new norm? Time will tell, right? All right, so number of pending sales. Now this is where a buyer and a seller say yes to a set of terms, all right? It doesn't mean it's sold, still have contingencies and, and inspections and things that they have to go through before they close, which is the sold, right? So this is homes for sale. This is what we call the wish list. This is where the tire hits the pavement, and this is what we look at as far as trends. So of that, 
our trend or the pending sales actually went up almost 20%. Again, that's a great metric for us to take a look at because that's year over year. So that means that we ended 2019 better than 2018, which I have to say, and then Q1 or the first quarter of 2018, it wasn't looking very pretty, uh, but we ended the year just absolutely just bang on target. So we did a great job, everybody as a whole. All right, days on market though, whoop, yep, that's right. Days on market actually came down across the Northwest MLS, all right? So we came down uh, in 2019, again, year over year. Our average market time was 49 days. We came down to 45 days across the Northwest MLS. Average sales price, again, when it's in a bigger scale, this is, I think, a little bit more accurate a number. Uh, average sales prices went up 8.3%. That's a great number. Now, if you want to know specifically what your community did, reach out to us. Post it up in the corner. Say, hey, George, what did, uh, what did any time? Uh, what, what, what were our averages there? Uh, what, did, what are our sales numbers? When, when should we be looking at peaking for buyer interest? Or maybe you're down in Covington or over in Federal Way or maybe even up in Snohomish. Again, let us know. We'll get you that information so you can make a very clear understanding of your community in, you know, in that very tight pocket. That's where the medium price will come and be a little bit more valuable for you. Uh, it actually went up 11.7%, all right, as a median price. So sales, uh, sales prices and median prices both went up across the Northwest MLS. Again, Bellingham, all the way down to Tri-Cities. Uh, parts of eastern Washington, including Chelan, Wenatchee, and whatnot, okay? So it's a very broad area. Now, to kind of dial it down a little bit, we broke it out into four, what we call kind of four strategic areas, and uh, we'll turn the magic board around. Okay, now don't be scared. <laughs> don't be scared about this. All right, so let's go through the same methodology, the same metrics to give you guys better understanding. So we're gonna isolate the east side versus the Seattle metro areas versus Snohomish County. And then of course we'll consider south, all right? So we're gonna kind of divide these up and let you guys look at what the numbers we're looking at all the way through 2019, year over year. So on the east side, number of homes for sale actually dropped. And in fact, the numbers dropped in all the areas, 45%, 30%, 34.5, 46, South County got the biggest number of, reduced number of homes for sale. Again, it's that bucket, everybody putting the information, the listings in the bucket, that's what we're talking about. So that's almost half. They lost half of their inventory year over year. That's a pretty big drop, all right? And the sold, uh, the sold number of sold homes percentage went up in uh, the east side, Seattle, in Snohomish County, and down south. Everybody had more sales than they did last year. Well, 2018. On the pending sales, again, everybody went up. Snohomish, or South County, actually saw the least number, and this was kind of a, I was kind of surprised at this. They only went up 9.8% 9, 9 on the, where the buyer and seller say yes, but we haven't quite closed yet. Everybody else uh, basically is in the 30s. And that is consistent with the number of solds that we're seeing here, all right? Now, when we talk about days on market, this one we saw a little bit of a difference, okay? So we saw uh, an increase in Eastside, Seattle, and South County, but Snohomish County actually went down, which I thought was really interesting because the market times, uh, you know, we have our east side, which is at 54 days, uh, and then we have uh, South County at, at uh, 47, with Seattle being the lowest number at 39 days on market on average, right? Uh, Snohomish County, who's really kind of right in the mix, they're actually, they went down, and they went down by a couple of days, which I was surprised, because they actually ended up having more of the market share. So I thought, hmm, that's interesting. So we saw a few more things moving. All right, on our uh, average sales price, and here's where you're gonna start to see some of the disparity. For the east side, the average sales price actually went down 1.1%. 1.1% 1 
Whereas on the median, it actually went up 2.7%. Again, now that's just taking a look at the entire east side, right? So you're going from Kenmore swinging all the way down to, to Newcastle and parts of uh, Issaquah and Sammamish. Again, a very broad area, but still gives you an indication. Yes, we saw appreciation, but not quite as much as what we've seen over here. So on this, for Seattle, Seattle saw a average sales price increase year over year of 4.1, 5.3% for Snohomish, 10.3% for Pierce, you know, the uh, down south. I did not include Pierce, it's just down south King County. Uh, median price was 2.7 for the east side, 1.4 for Seattle, which actually went down, which is not uncommon when you look at the medium value versus uh, all of the dynamics that have been going on in Seattle. It went up both uh, for Snohomish and South County, giving us, a again, a higher medium price. This number is probably what you're going to see in the media, uh, which is fine. This is a little bit more of an accurate number as far as on a bigger scale. Again, for your community, we'll use more the medium price because it's a smaller number to work with. It tends to be uh, a little more accurate. All right. So with that, did we return to a seller's market in these areas? And resoundedly, the answer is yes, we did. Our inventory at 0.9 months, and that was consistent in all four of these different areas, that's not even one month of inventory. That's back when we were taking a look at 2017, where we had some crazy offer moments. Now, when we take a look at the Northwest as a whole, did the Northwest MLS also revert to a seller's market? The answer? Yes. We have, uh, we've actually started to lean towards a seller's market. Part of that is the fact that our inventory is so low. So buyers that did not get out in the market yet, you're going to have a few fewer homes to look at. Yeah, let's keep things in perspective. Because we do have a lower inventory, it's not uncommon to take a house off the market during the holidays and then reintroduce it in the spring. Totally common. So will we see a bump in inventory? The answer is yes. We are going to see our spring jump in inventory. Uh, as, long as, the, as long as the mortgage interest rates stay at that 3.75, 3.875, or 3.78, residential, uh, you know, 15 and, or that's not 15, that's 30 year pricing. Uh, conventional, that is your average price as far as uh, mortgage interest rate. Remember, there are add ons for condos. So if you're looking at a condo, a townhome, multifamily, there are add ons. So the interest rate actually goes up. Remember, it's based on risk. All right. So again, single family, 30 year, about 3.75. As long as we stay at that level, our sales activity is going to, again, continue to increase, which is going to give us an amazing spring market. However, here's the however, it also is going to depend on the number of sellers that decide to re-engage. Now, we have a new excise tax, graduated scale, that's going to give people a little bit more punishment. State gets a little bit more, and you need to keep that in mind. That's okay. Just understand that when you're taking a look at your net selling costs, it's not just that 1.78%, it's gonna have a graduated level. Uh, there's a prior video, if you need that information, let us know, we will post that for you. We have a little uh, pictorial for you that uh, we can send to you and it gives you a really good indication in how the math calculates out. All right, or just ask us, you know, hey, how much is it gonna sell my house? Uh, and we'll go ahead and we'll throw that out to you, it's simple enough. So, all things considered, we expect our market to really continue to be a, I'm going to say a more flatter market. Uh, we are going to have our spring bump, and then it's going to, I think, just taper off for the Q3 and Q4. However, it is all interdependent on mortgage interest rates. That has been the massive driver as far as good market, as far as seller's market or buyer's market over the last two years, well, it's actually longer than that, but it is more profound in the last two years. Uh, we'll post a chart that shows, you know, January, and then you see, uh, you know, sales drop, and then all of a sudden when May hits, boom, it just goes up. Why? Rates came down. 
Watch your treasury, watch your bonds. Uh, those are the, the metrics that are gonna tell you what interest rates are gonna do. It's even easier. Just reach out to like Dan Golden at Cornerstone or Juliana at Qualstar Credit Union or you know, Sonal. Uh, and if you need those numbers, we'll paste them up on, uh, on the website for you. Uh, if you need a couple of others, we've got some folks at TechFast. We'll go ahead and we'll, we'll you just get in touch with them and say, hey, put me on your weekly market update for interest rates. And they'll let you know. And you can watch the trends. And uh, we will have Dan in here. Uh, he's going to go over the year in review and what to anticipate, how things are going to be affected by our presidential year uh, and all the dynamics that go with it. All right. So if you have any questions, post them up in the corner. We had tons and tons of questions, you know, as far as from buyers and sellers. That's why we decided this would be a great video. If you have any questions or if you want a specific market area, there's no cost. It's free to you. Just request it. We'll just fire it off to you. All right. In the meantime, you guys have an absolutely beautiful day. It's going to be sunny and amazing. And you, I will see you on the next video. And uh, I'll talk to you later.